How'd you get that one, Steve? First drop on the on for her orange. <laughs> very first drop. Nice. Yeah. There we go. Double the cups out. Oh, you want to see? Yeah. I wonder whether Looks I'm like... on around you, to be honest, because I'm going under the boat a bit, but... Mm, yeah. yeah. One's going out the other side. There we are. Oh, yeah. net, oh, it's a good fish. Woohoo! Doing it. Not a bad fish. Not at all, mate. Just a bit pigeon pair to that one that Steve just got too. You're on the net or are you right? Well hooked, eh? Very nice. There you go. Um, yeah, it's probably under the ice. On fire orange. <laughs> well done, mate. Good lure. Hey guys, you're watching the release video for our latest fishing lure, and it is on fire. Stay tuned for how to rig this lure, some crazy fast fishing action, and then a battle with an unknown monster from the deep. Because <laughs> we always seem to do it different ways, don't we? It's all good. All you have to do is just drop it down and leave it on the bottom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you don't have to do much to catch fish. Well, that was pretty easy, eh? Just dragging it. <laughs> pretty much as soon as I hit the bottom. Bouncing it off the bottom a little bit. Right. That's not a bad one, eh? Journey. Hey! Oh, there we That's go. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the cave. Cute little one, too. in the middle of a workup. Now oh, we're starting to pull a little bit of string, let's go. Yeah, a little bit of weight there, it's good. Yeah. Got our own little Minn Kota going out the front here. Yeah. <laughs> Steve's fish is going to fight and pull us back. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I am just right yeah. there. Oh. Well, look, I haven't seen him. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a good sized fish. Oh, thank you. Oh, I can get it if you like. Yeah, I'll grab it. No, all good, thanks. Nice. Good fish. Woohoo! There we go. It's all right, yeah. Need that net in a second, oh yeah, better hurry up then. <laughs> just in case you were wondering what they were feeding on, look what this guy just sped up. Oh wow! Holy! <laughs> oh, that was good, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. There's your pilchard. That's, that's what your dolphins are. That's what they're chasing, eh? Oh, mate. It's the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> now I was just going to record you and going to say, Steve, tell me how you uh, catch your fish, <laughs> and I didn't uh, get a chance. Firstly, I just dropped this glow bite down, and that's the way it calling. Good fish. Oh, that's a beauty. Well done. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Oh, you've just been quietly working on them for a while, haven't you? Yeah. Very good. Yeah, nice work, mate. Good stuff. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> nice, mate. That? Beautiful fish. So I got the brother here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to the day. <laughs> oh, that'll love it, eh? It's fantastic, mate. Well done. That's good fishing. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, oh mate, he's a bit more than the brother, he might be the mother. Whoa. Woo! That's a good fish. Nice work mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Beautiful, eh? Kick 
colour of that lure, eh? In the light, you can see oh, yeah. why it's um, standing out for them. Woo! <coughs> oh, good fish. The sun on that. Beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Hey. Your lens is quite dirty there, too. Oh, is it? Oh, flipping heck, so it is. <laughs> That's a good fish. Nice man. shot of my belly. Wow, what an epic morning that was. So many fish and so fast. The only downside was the guys were hooking up so quick I couldn't get them to explain their technique before they had another fish on. Unbelievable. Still, that gave us a great excuse to head out again on another day, do some more filming and get those tips and tricks nailed so that we could share them with you all. What made things even better? On the way home, we got a visit from these amazing creatures. So close, you could just about touch them. What a brilliant day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Someone was swimming upside down. Easy. Just for fun. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, it's home along upside down. Right there. <laughs> Gorgeous, man. So, on the very next weather window, we were straight back out there. And this time I made sure I started by asking Steve to explain how he fishes the new on-fire orange lure. Yeah, well first I like to use a bit of the secret sauce. Um, Procure, whatever you want to use. I fill up my glow bite. I even smear a bit on the skirts as well, to be honest. Um, I'm fishing a lure saver night. It's fine that these here are working a treat at the moment. Whether it's different times of the year that they work better than others, but only happened for the last month and I reckon that it's worth a bomb. Um, just dropping it straight down. The moment we're in 55, 56 metres so earlier today we we're sort of finding the fish around sort of that 10 to 15 metres off the bottom. So I've got the coloured braid and I want to sort of get down towards my blue. I'm starting to feel a few touches on the way down. Let it hit the bottom and then I start a really slow wind up. You know, I'm just waiting for the little touches on the end of the rod and I'm not going to strike it just going to let them suck the skirt, get right up it, and once I feel a bit more weight come on, I'll just lift the rod, I won't even really strike. So I'm coming down into the um, the zone now where I've been getting hit. Let's see what happens, we'll just come over to a new spot here actually. After seeing a little bit of life, a couple of touches just there, as I've gone into the blue, yep, and now, yep, so I'm on the bottom there, touch, 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 and we're straight into it, yep. Just a small one, this one, but we can't choose what size fish we catch on the way down. They just seem to follow it down through the school and someone picks it up. But these on fire orange in particular have just been absolutely going off. Um, I came out the other morning and it was 10 past six, first day break, first drop of the day, and you know, straight into them. Got my five fish within about 30 minutes. And I find that if you um, wind up a couple of times and you don't get any touches, bring it right up and start the process again. Dropping through the water column is what's attracting them, yeah. There we go. He's a nice fish. We'll put him back. Off he goes. So yeah, I'll start the same process again. Bit of Procure. And the little dispenser, yep. and it bleeds out the back. So just using the new on fire orange, and the challenge actually trying to get um, get different fishermen to tell me how they fish this lure or how they fish a grumpy fish. But uh, we found the last couple of sessions we've been out, people are hooking up so fast it's kind of hard to talk through anything. But I'll give it a, day, a go today. I'll um, I'll talk you through what I'm doing. So some people do cast ahead of the drift a little bit or just lob it ahead of the drift. 
Um, and that can make a big difference some days to get your line more vertical, especially if you drift really fast. Personally, a lot of the time I don't bother. Um, and today we certainly haven't had to bother at all. So just bombing it straight to the bottom, really. And um, there has been pretty good evidence of fish being a good 10, 15, 20 metres off the bottom. So it's worth just keeping my thumb really lightly on the spool so I can detect any taps or changes that might be going on in the rate of the descent of the lure. The last fish actually grabbed me a good 15 metres off the bottom and he was running with it um, before. I just felt the weight come on before he even got there. So it could easily happen again. But hopefully I'll get to the bottom and I can talk you through. Because I, I do a little sequence and it might be just because um, I don't want to get bored. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, if I'm waiting for fish, I go through a bit of a sequence. Um, and it just helps me to cover the different options and the different ways you can fish the lure. So there I am on the bottom now, and it's quite possible that fish have seen it going down and have chased it down. So that very first when I engage the gear and I just lift it off the mud, I'm often really closely attentive at that point as to whether a fish is going to grab it immediately. And I did feel one little bite, but um, nothing too much. And so what I tend to do then is go through a sequence of tapping it on the bottom. And there we go. I did another good bite then. So I'm actually... There we go. I'm not going to get to tell you everything because I'm onto a fish and he's a good one. So he's running nicely actually. So at this point, I'm going to let him run. There's no structure. We're out in the middle of the Hauraki Gulf. So he's not going to wrap me around any rocks. And this is probably the best fish I've had on today. So that's, that's good. Nice little run to get us started. Avoiding any temptation to touch the drag. I've checked the drag earlier. And if anything, you know, I've probably caught five or six fish on this already today, so there's no way I want to put too much pressure on um, that line. Don't even want to talk about it, actually. <laughs> but um, no, he's a nice fish. So what I was going to say, if he hadn't grabbed me at that point, I often bounce my lure along the bottom for about maybe up to a minute. Um, and if that doesn't achieve results then I start doing slightly bigger lifts and then if I didn't have a fish on I would be lifting and just doing a little quarter wind or a half wind and just slowly bringing it up through the water column like that. This guy's pretty stubborn he doesn't want to come home. I was going to lift him slowly. No big hurry but he's a good fish. This is one of these um, LV rod and reel sets so it's quite a light rod but I love it because it um, allows the lure to have really good action. Just a slow wafting without swift jerks. I'm just keeping, he really doesn't want to come home, this guy. Keeping the pressure on him. Put some weight to him. Yeah, he has, eh? You can see it's a light little rod, but it um, just folds away. Just let him do his run. We've got a whole uh, bin full of pennies. And this was going to be the last fish of the day. So it looks like it's going to be a good one. At the moment, I'm not gaining a lot of ground at all. <laughs> That's all right. Looks heavy. Yeah, he does look heavy, doesn't he? There we go. We're making some head round, headway now. Slowly. Still can't see any colour. Um, yeah, I can grab the net. I figure when he gets close, he's just going to pop up, I suspect. Better not be a stingray. <laughs> Right, have a little run. There we go. See something? Woo! He's a good sized fish. It's a good sized kingfish. A donkey. Didn't fight like a kingfish. So that kingfish grabbed that lure right on the bottom. Hey, well done, thank you, Steve. Yeah, I'll bet for that. Yep. Oh, he's a good solid fish. Let me get the other side of you with the sun, boys. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, that way. Good solid <laughs> fish. <laughs> Thanks for waiting for that one, guys. Thanks, Steve. Was, uh, wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs>and it's all rigged and ready to go. One of the advantages being when you do hook a fish and he's shaking his head trying to get the, um, the hooks out, the skirt and the head slides away. So he can't use the head, the weight of the head to lever the hooks out. Um, and also he's not chewing on the skirt so much so it helps it to last a bit longer. Um, and you'll see that the um, grumpy fish hooks have this, these hook flies, these big tassels on them. And the whole reason for that is that they actually add drag on the hooks as we're on the drift and actually keep the hooks up in the skirt. Because when we're drifting, the lure tail's out almost straight. And by having the hook flies, um, it's adding drag to the hooks and keeping the hooks out and up in the skirt as well.